I know you are a huge fan of Westerns, obviously. Huge. So you are trapped on a desert island. What are the two or three that you take with you that that's it? That's all you can have. Okay. The first I always say is uh, for a few dollars more, right? It was the audaciousness of that movie, Sergio Leone's uh, it's the second time he used Clint Eastwood, first time Clint Eastwood and, and Lee Van Cleef uh, uh, met, then Jean-Marie Volante, who was the baddie in the first one, is the baddie in the second one. Like, he died in the first one, playing basically the exact same guy. Just awesome. I'll take that um, first. I would probably take Unforgiven. Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. The amount of times I've, I've watched that movie, even with the kind of narrow portrayals of, of, of um, everyone else, uh, uh, that shootout at the end is just wicked. And then I'll go old school, maybe James Stewart Winchester 73. I think that movie just makes me think of my mom and, and my dad. Um, mm -mm, no, I'll take the man who shot Liberty Valance, Lee Marvin, James Stewart, John Wayne, Woody Strode, Strother Martin, and young Lee Van Cleef. Mm. So those three. Uh, good choices. Um, I want to start with re regarding your movie. Uh, congratulations. I had a blast watching it. And I also want to thank Netflix for making it because it's about freaking time. Stories like this are told. Um, when you were researching to write this, what, what do you think is like the biggest surprise that people don't know that you wanted to make sure got incorporated into your film? about the old west well in learning about the old um the old west and more characters and more uh uh lives and lifestyles um in the old west i you know i was doing that growing up the biggest um surprise were were how many cowboys were actually black like some like one in four cowboys were were of color um that was a huge surprise but also how many amazing colorful um uh human beings there were the western was always given to us for for a wider scope when people leave the harder they fall whether you know whatever their feeling is it will now be broader they will know that stagecoach mary really existed gertrude smith really existed rufus buck nat love bill pickett and that was the biggest surprise um cherokee bill Cathay Williams, Jim Beckwith, Wiley Esco, Bass Reeves. The biggest surprise of, of uh, uh, the, the, me learning about the Old West and what I learned about it was not how much, how many of these characters they were, but actually their contributions. Like Bass Reeves is the, the inspiration for the Lone Ranger. Their actual contributions in, in, in everything that Hollywood um, portrayed and kind of removed uh, I hope people walk away from the harder they fall, just feeling uh, more of a sense of uh, of self, who we were back then, not just black people, everyone, who we were back then, just as, as a human race. What did you learn making the Die by Dawn that really helped you make this film? I think, firstly, making uh, They Die by Dawn, my short film, I learned um, a lot. I learned... A lot about um, actors and their and their process, um, working with such as uh, esteemed greats like the late great Michael K. Williams, Gene Carlo Esposito, Isaiah Washington, one of my favorite actors of all time, um, Nate Parker, uh, Jesse Williams, uh, Rosario Dawson, Eric Badu. I learned a lot about actors, their process, how to how to um, um, work with them and, and what to expect. Basically no games on set when they when they arrive they are in total character um and i learned i learned a lot about like just working with horses there weren't many horses in in they die by dawn as much as there are in the heart of they fall but just working with horses and new things that i'll never know like some actors are allergic to horses and, and just all, all of that kind of stuff but the environment of the old west was so kind of second nature to me it all just seemed real when I when I got there and that I took with me to the heart of they fall like this is real let's just shoot on location and and 
and also how much shooting on location um, uh, aids the actors and the and the crew. It makes you really feel like you were there in that space, in that space and time. So even when you're on lunch break, you're still in the old west. Um, uh, uh, that stuff was great. Uh, every Western has a big third act shootout. Obviously your film has a third act shootout. Uh, talk about what you wanted uh, in your third act shootout and maybe the challenges of, of putting it together. What I wanted in my third act shootout was super high octane um, uh, action, but also like storylines converging and to give us something we've never seen before. like like Stage Watch Mary versus Trudy Smith. I've just not seen that in a, in a Western on that, on that level um, where the women are just as powerful as the men. The body counts are high on, on every side and also doing something musically with it that I've never um, seen in a, in a Western with the usage of Fela Kuti and Afrobeat. And it's all, uh, it just all, fit seamlessly in one cohesive uh, uh, plate. I think that the challenges of it were the hard, were, you know, the, the I suppose the amount of horses um, that were used when the, uh, when particular things happen without giving spoilers the, and, sh you know, shooting around the horses and having the stunt, those things were, were challenging, but more exciting than challenging. And also just shooting in COVID because that, was crazy. It was, it was crazy, but we did it. I, I fuck. I'm almost out of time. I have two more questions um, that I really want to ask. Uh, I'm I'm always obsessed with the editing because that's where it all comes together. You have some very cool shots in this movie, especially in the credits, the beginning where you use cuts and still. Anyway, can you sort of talk about the editing process and um, what were the big challenges you over, overcame, or you know, just if you could talk about the editing. The editing was amazing. You know, um, I, I work with a, uh, a person I'm a huge fan of. His name is Tom Eagles, and he edited um, What We Do in the Shadows, Jojo Rabbit, um, Hunt for the Wilder People, and his time and, and pace for things, for drama and humor and quirkiness would just fit into everything and everything I am as a, as a filmmaker. And, um, and so him and I, when we were, were editing, we're really approaching this from a different angle because it's heavily music driven as well as it is um as much as it is dramatic so finding those um beats where we we go from song to score to dialogue to you know was a was a was a challenge but like a beautiful challenge it wasn't a it wasn't a struggle i think the biggest um challenge for me was it being my first time my first feature is learning to censor myself, the meaning, or learning to edit myself, because I want to keep everything in there. I loved every stage of the movie. The first cut was super long. I loved every stage of it. So learning how to pull back and and edit uh, my own my own um, babies, so to speak, was the biggest challenge. But we did it, and it was awesome. I'm, yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure you have a much longer cut. Um, I have to stop here. I'm just going to say congrats on the movie. I look forward to whatever you're going to be doing next. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Man. Viva Collider. Cool. Thank you. Have a great day.